Now, let's hit the Passover here. Um, the Passover it happens in chapter 12, and this is a, kind of a neat thing. Let me just kind of walk through. If you ever get a chance to go to a Jewish Pesach service, go to it. It's really it's worth seeing uh, Passover services. And basically, there are three things involved in the Passover services. One of them is the lamb. And what happens to the lamb? They kill the lamb, they drain the blood. What do they do with the blood of the lamb? They put it on the doorpost, right? So the, they put it on the doorpost and the sides across the lintel. And when the angel of death looks down and sees the blood, what does the angel do? Passes over. And that's where the name Passover comes from. The angel of death passes over when it sees the blood on the door. Does anybody remember? When I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. There's a, there used to be an old uh, hymn that, that narrated this uh, Passover, seeing the blood and passing over. So the lamb, by the way, what do they do with the lamb? They roast the lamb then in an open fire. They roast the lamb and they eat lamb. They have lamb that night and they're supposed to eat the whole lamb up in one night and stuff. So that's chow down time. And so lamb's good meat and stuff. So they eat the lamb and they place, blood, blood is placed over. That's what happens to the lamb. Pardon? Uh, today, they, well, today they don't kill lambs. But back, yeah, but back then, they probably put it in a bowl and then used it like with a, um, like a swab thing to swab around the door and things. But uh, bitter herbs. They were to eat bitter herbs to remind them of the bitter slavery in Egypt. They were to, to remind them of the bitterness of their slavery in Egypt. What do they use for bitter herbs today? Has anybody ever been to a Pesach service? It's bitter. Does anybody do horseradish? Yeah, have you tried that? Yeah, that, she has captured it. My father used to love horseradish. All I can say is that when you eat it, man, it's like you had hair in your nose. You don't have hair in your nose anymore. It burns like it burns everything out of you. Uh, you only need a little bit. And actually, if you're smart, you'll smell it ahead of time. And the smell will be enough that you'll know you don't eat this stuff. But actually, some people eat horseradish. My, my father ate horseradish and stuff. But you're right. It's, it's, it's totally... Uh, you want to taste something bitter, horseradish. Does anybody like horseradish? My dad, yeah, okay. So there are people that like horseradish, okay? My dad used to raise horseradish and do horseradish. I can't, it just totally smokes me out. But anyways, the bitter herbs, they'll eat horseradish now and they'll dip it and stuff, yeah. Oh, it's for Pearson. Yep, yep, yeah. Is everybody here? Yeah, your eyes start watering. It's almost like onions, only worse. And my, my dad used to do exactly the same thing. And uh, anyways, unleavened bread, unleavened bread. Why were they to eat unleavened bread? And this Passover feast then starts the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of Unleavened Bread lasts seven days. For seven days, they are not to eat unleavened bread. And basically, God said, you're going to have to leave so fast from Egypt, you're not going to have time to let the bread rise. In other words, in order for bread to rise, you've got to let it sit, and the yeast works, and, it, and it, bread grows. Um, and things. He says, you're going to have to leave so fast, eat unleavened bread. Until this day, by the way, when you go over to Israel and during Passover time, by the way, Passover time for them is, what, what is it for us as Christians? Easter, okay? This is when Jesus is going to die, the Lord's Supper, and then he goes and dies and stuff. So it's right around our Easter is their Passover. And when you go uh, to Israel to this day and you, and you do the Passover, um, you walk into a grocery store. In Israel, when I was there, this is how they subsidize the poor. It was a dime for a loaf of bread. I've been in a grocery store in Israel. You pick the bread up off the shelf. It's not wrapped in, in paper or anything like that. You pick it up and it is still warm. Okay, is this good? This is really good. It's like homemade bread. And I've actually picked it up from the shelf and it's been warm. We take it home and eat it. It's great bread. Only problem is on Passover, you go in and you're going to go buy your bread. What's the problem? Do you ever see that white butcher paper, the white butcher paper? And all of a sudden you go to the bread place where this wonderful bread is, and it's all covered over with this white butcher paper, and they won't sell you the 11 bread. So that means you've got to eat crackers. Question, are you going to eat crackers? What's crackers like? I, I need my peanut butter and jelly sandwich, okay? And so, I mean, I eat that every day of my life and stuff, and so what do I do? If they don't give you 11 bread, what do you do? You go over to the Arab section, you buy the bread over there, okay? <laughs> And the other thing I should say, they, they make wonderful bread. The other thing they make is these bagels. For about a dime, you get a bagel like this, like a loaf of bread. It's about this big around with sesame seed on it. And I've, I'll never forget my last bagel out of Damascus Gate. I come up out of Damascus Gate, and I buy this Arab dude's out there selling, and he's got all these bagels up. And so I buy this, this, this uh, bagel off him. And um, 
And then I take a bite of it, and then it was good, really good bagel, and I'm, I'm starving and stuff, and so it was really good and things. The only problem is when I went back for the second bite, I looked at the bagel, and there's only one thing worse than seeing a fly in your bagel, and that's seeing half a fly. And yeah, I did. <laughs> and it was half a fly there, and I had already swallowed. And it was like, it was, you're thrilled. That was my last bagel, and I just couldn't do it. But you get so used in that culture, they let the food like out, you know, like, I mean, the food's just sitting out, man. There's flies, you get used to it after a while, but when you do, you don't ever get used to it. At least I can never get used to that. So anyways, unleavened bread, they go for seven days with unleavened bread then, and this is a feast of Passover and feast of unleavened bread. Now, what about the children? I love the way the Jews do their children and their feasts. Um, in chapter 12 here, down to verse 26, it describes the children's role. Now, by the way, in many of our churches, what do we do with children? Do we dismiss the children and yeah. get them out of there? The Jewish people have their children participate. What do kids love doing? Ask what? Questions. And so here it says, when your children ask, what does the ceremony mean? Then tell them it is a Passover, a sacrifice to the Lord who has passed over the house of the Israelites in Egypt. Okay? So what happens is the children are prompted and allowed to ask questions. What mean you by the service? And then the parents answer the kids' questions. What does that do to the family structure? Does that bond the families together? The kids participate in the worship with their parents by asking questions, which is what they want to do anyway. And so it's, it's, it's beautiful. I don't know. But the, the children, the way they incorporate them is beautiful. Um, now, what about the Lord's Supper? Jesus, on the same night he was betrayed, took bread and broke it, said, this is my body, which is broken for you, okay? So the Lord's Supper is actually a Passover feast with the lamb and things, only in this time, who's going to be the lamb? Jesus is going to be the Passover lamb. And the bread is broken. By the way, many of you in your churches till this day, when you do communion, when you do the Eucharist, you'll do uh, unleavened bread, okay? Unleavened bread based on the, the feast of Passover and stuff. The cup is taking. And what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying this, Jesus could die any time, but when does he choose to die? Right at Passover, because Jesus is the new Exodus. As Moses delivered them from the slavery in Egypt, Jesus is going to now deliver them from their sins, from the bondage of sin. As Moses delivered them from the slavery of Egypt, now Jesus is going to deliver them from the bondage of sin. So Jesus is doing a new Exodus. And who is Jesus? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Paul tells us that Jesus is our Passover lamb. That Jesus is the Passover lamb. Do you remember Jesus was on the cross and he wasn't dying fast enough? And what did they want to do to him to get him to die faster? They're going to break his legs, you remember? Because when you're on a cross, you know, you asphyxiate because you can't breathe. And if they break your legs, then you can't hold yourself up anymore. And But by the way, were they supposed to break any of the bones of the lamb? No, no. So question, were Jesus' bones broken? No, nope, no, nope. just like it was prophesied, Isaiah, Psalm 22 and things, uh, wonderful passages, Isaiah 53, uh, Psalm 22 of Jesus' crucifixion and that kind of thing. Jesus' bones were not broken. So Jesus is our Passover lamb. So this whole thing moving out of this freedom, this breaking out of Egypt, becomes ours in Christ. And so it's kind of a really neat thing. Now, 